Mom! Mommy! Mommy! Mama! Can I just change my name? Oh, hey there. Welcome to my channel. It's Marissa here. I am making homemade chili today. I'm going to show you a homemade chili recipe that is so delicious and super filling, super nourishing. Um, and I feel like there is another like adjective that I wanted to throw in there, but I can't remember right now. Whenever I eat chili, it always reminds me of my grandmother because she always made us chili growing up. And it's such a beautiful dish and a beautiful memory to think about when you can put a food and a memory or a meal and a memory together because it always just takes you back to that time which is what I want to do with this recipe I am inspired by her and by her recipe that she made and I'm going to put my own holistic nutritional twist on it because I'm a nutritionist so I'm gonna throw some friggin veggies in there hello so you guys ready? You should be because your bellies are about to growl watching this. I know mine is definitely growling already. Okay, guys, if you love any kind of cooking recipes, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you love any kind of content that has to do with being a mindful mom, raising healthy, mindful children, and teaching your children lifelong healthy habits. You gotta subscribe down at the bottom. And don't forget to ding the bell, ding, 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 because if you don't, how the heck are you gonna know when I put out some awesome videos? Also, don't forget to follow me at Noble Baby Wellness and tag me in any of your amazing recipes that you have designed, posted by me, because I would love to see your twist on it. All right, guys, are you ready to cook? Everything that I'm gonna be using is gonna be down in the description, so don't forget to read that if you do wanna make anything. I also try to mention some of the quantities in my videos, but sometimes I just end up going on a whole rant and to chatting about whatever the heck is on my mind. So check that out if you do want to make this recipe. All right guys, we'll see you in a second. All right friends, here is my nutritional twist on chili. You got broccoli, and I would say this is about, looks about one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six heads of, or fl six Flor florets or florets or whatever the heck they're called. Anyways, there's about six of them. You can put as many as you want depending on how much you are gonna make. I'm gonna end up chopping these into smaller smaller pieces here because it's easier to eat. And I am gonna keep the stems because why not? The stems are so good and there's a ton of uh, fiber in them that's really good for your little one's digestive system. Garlic, obviously one of my staples in every single one of my dishes because garlic is delicious. Onion, some ground beef, a can of beans. I'm also not gonna use all of this ground beef. I'll probably use about half of it. I'm also gonna chop up a tomato in there as well, but I never really buy tomatoes when they're not in season. I actually don't ever buy tomatoes. I just have it in my fridge because my husband bought it the other day and I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm gonna toss it in the chili. But like I said, I never buy tomatoes when they're out of season because they have no similar taste to what they taste like when they are fresh from the garden. I feel like they're actually pretty disgusting. Okay. I feel like they're actually pretty disgusting when they're not in season. They're very sour. And I also have in this bowl a tablespoon of cumin, a teaspoon and a half of chili powder. Make sure you don't get the spicy one unless you are just eating it for yourself and not for your little one. Or if your little one does like spicy stuff, hey, who am I to stop you from buying spicy chili? But this is the like no spice, just completely mild chili powder. And I also have a teaspoon of paprika. And I can't forget some tomato sauce that you definitely need to be adding into your chili. I also strongly recommend you can use tomato paste. You can also use um, strained, like the chunky tomatoes, but I just didn't have any in my cabinet, so I just didn't even bother putting it or using it. And this is what I'm gonna be using for my delicious homemade chili recipe. Are you guys ready? Oh, and I forgot one thing, rice. Um, you guys are probably wondering, Marissa, why is your rice in water and sitting in a bowl like that? 
So, the reason why I have my rice sitting in this bowl is because I want it to soak. I have this uh, soaking overnight. So any grains that I use, I always soak overnight because it helps the enzymes to start breaking it down, which is gonna be able to help you better digest the grains. Because sometimes it can be really hard, especially for little ones, to digest grains. So I always recommend to first avoid giving grains before the age of one and a half because they don't have the proper digestive enzymes to actually break down grains. And when you do introduce grains to your little one, make sure that you soak it overnight just because it's gonna help them digest way, way, way better. And when they're able to digest better, they're gonna be able to absorb more nutrients in the grains. Guys, I actually learned a pretty cool trick today. So if you don't want your cutting board to slip and slide and you don't wanna buy that rubber mat that I used in my spaghetti recipe video, Wet a cloth, just a ta tablecloth, rag, whatever you have. Wet it and set your cutting board right on top of it so it's not gonna slip, slide, and dance and chop your finger off. Actually, I'm gonna change the knife. I always keep my scraps for vegetable stock, so don't for, don't throw these out. I freeze them, I put them in a container, put them in the freezer, and then when I make any type of soup, stews, I throw this inside the pot and let it cook down. When you're cutting the onions, you can definitely leave them chunky. You can dice them. Um, it doesn't really matter how you cook them, or it doesn't really matter how you cut them. I definitely always leave my onions chunky. If you've watched any of my other cooking videos, chunky onions are my favorite thing. Probably a ton of different freaking ways that people peel or cut or do things with their onions. Also friends, if you have any tips on chopping onions without crying or your eyes burning, let me know and comment in the bottom because Hot damn guys, some days when I cut the onions, I'm good, like it does not bother me. And then other days, like right now, my eyes are just really, really, really watery. And they're just not okay right now. <laughs> Also friends, if you have mushrooms too, you can definitely throw mushrooms into your chili because I love mushrooms. I actually hated mushrooms for the longest freaking time until I went on vacation with my BFF and she made one of the best, actually probably still hands down the best spaghetti I've ever had in my life. If you've seen any of my other cooking videos, there's no method to my madness of chopping or anything like that. I literally just chop things. There's never any kind of even 
size. They're usually all different freaking shapes and sizes that you can see, because I just don't really care. I'm gonna eat it, it's gonna go down the same place, it's gonna come out the same place, so it really does not matter to me. I know that some people are very big on having, like my mother-in-law, she's very big on having the exact same size of everything, and I do understand that it's because it needs to cook evenly, but regardless of how I'm cooking, it's all cooking evenly. Before I start chopping anything else, I'm going to get my oil ready to saute these. You know you are a true European when you have olive oil in a wine bottle. Okay, so while my olive oil is getting ready to heat up, I'm gonna start chopping my broccoli. You can keep the stems or stalks or whatever they're called in there. You don't have to. If you want to, you can. I keep it because I like to use all of the vegetable. That's what it's there for. It's what God, the universe, Mother Nature, whatever you want to call it, that's what it's there. That they created it for you to use the whole entire thing. So use it. All right, oil is heated up. I have it at like a four temperature. I guess that's like me low, medium heat. I don't know, something. Sauteing. So yeah, guys, like I said in the beginning of the video, chili is one of my childhood memories and I love it. It, it every time I eat it it reminds me of sitting at the table with my grandmother and eating it and enjoying it I want to know what your guys' favorite childhood meal is so I'm gonna throw this lots of salt I would say that's probably about two teaspoons of salt. And I always add as I go. So my rule of thumb is every time I add a new, every time I add a new ingredient into the pot, I always try to add some salt to it to add another layer of flavor. I know it looks like a lot of black pepper, but if you guys could really see, there, this is like one of the worst pepper mills ever. Okay, so I always add my seasoning in the pot while the onions are sauteing because it just adds so much delicious flavor. So I'm gonna throw all, actually I'm gonna throw half my seasoning in there and saute it up. This is looking beautiful. All right guys, I am only adding half of this ground beef. I'm only keeping this half in here because I'm gonna use it for breakfast tomorrow. So this is Don't be afraid to use salt, guys. I mean, it's easier said than done. I never ever really had a lot of salt in any of my food growing up, and then ever since I started uh, dating my fiance, he always pushes so much salt, and it tastes so good, and it's worth it. So don't be afraid of using salt. I'm trying to get past the fear of salt and sodium and all that foolishness that you hear on the news and the television and this and that, but I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you invest, not really invest, that you purchase a good type of salt. 
This is the salt that I currently use, Herbamare. I buy it literally at Costco's. It is the one of the best salts that I can find. It is an herb sea salt, and if you guys haven't seen me use it before, I strongly recommend because there is kelp in here, and kelp's really, really, really good for the thyroid, especially for your toddler's thyroid because they need that kelp. It's rich in iodine, and the thyroid loves iodine. Ninety percent done. So I'm gonna throw the tomato sauce in here. Come on. Okay. This is about two cups, guys. I'm gonna throw some water into these and rinse it out. So I can get everything in here. I can imagine my grandmother, since I'm at my grandmother's house, I can imagine her watching the video and seeing what type of disaster I'm causing in her house. So she's probably having a slight heart attack. But that's okay, Yaya. Making delicious food in your beautiful kitchen and inspiring so many beautiful people out there. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna throw the rest of this in here. I am also going to throw my broccoli in and I chopped up the tomatoes. I didn't even show you guys, I'm so sorry. I chopped them up and I kept them chunkier just because they taste super good and chilly when they're nice and chunky. You can just mix this all up. Make sure you mix it really, really, really good. And get, oh, son of a bitch, everything in there. And I'm going to throw my beans in there. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm gonna let that chili cook down for about a half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna monitor and See how it's going how it's looking the thing the thing that I love about cooking and I feel like I say this in all of my videos is I love the fact that cooking is so versatile and it can literally be anything you want you can add anything you want there is no limits there's no restrictions there is no do's and don'ts it's just do what you love I, this is one of my favorite parts about cooking is because I feel like it's kind of meditative. It's very relaxing for me. It's very enjoyable. I love creating dishes. I love cooking in the kitchen. Sometimes I put on music when no one's here and I just sing and I dance and I jam out while I'm cooking. But when my husband makes chili, he throws sausage in there. He throws barbecue sauce, hot sauce. I don't even know. Beer sometimes he even throws in his chili. and. Guys, it is so, 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 so good. Like that was the first dish he ever made for me when we first started dating. I remember him packing it up and making it for my lunch so I could take to work. And it was like the second or third day that we were kind of seeing each other. And oh, chili's just, it brings so many beautiful memories for me. So, and I hope when you guys are cooking that you and your little ones create some awesome memories around the meals and meal time because that's what eating and cooking and meal times is all about is just 
creating those awesome, awesome memories and creating a healthy mindset around meals and eating because they're gonna take that for the rest of their life and that's gonna be a healthy habit for them is having a beautiful view on food and looking back when they're older, they're like, oh my God, I remember my mom and I remember my dad making this with me or making this for me and it was all, honestly so much fun. And that's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to create those awesome, lifelong healthy habits for you and for your little one. All right, so as this chili is cooking, I'm gonna chop up another onion, about a half of an onion for my rice. And I'm gonna show you how I do the rice right now. I'm going to dump it out. Yeah, you want to toss this water because you want to get rid of some of that starch and wash it, rinse it off. Rinse it off with the tap water. I really hate tap water, but. Let it chill there for now. I'm gonna get another pot ready with olive oil and heat that up to start sauteing the onions. Okay. I'm gonna turn this light on because it's pretty dark. It's starting to get dark, unfortunately. So have this at a six heat, five, five heat. So I'm gonna wait for this to start heating up a little bit. While I was not on the camera. I was stirring the chili and making sure that it doesn't boil over. I have turned it down to a low, low temperature, the lowest that the, uh, the stove can go because I want to kind of simmer up some of this liquid, if you guys can see. It's pretty liquidy still. There. Um, you can see that it's still pretty liquidy, so I just want to sauce I want to kind of get rid of some of that liquid. All right guys, this is starting to heat up. I would say that was about two teaspoons of salt. I always estimate that it's two teaspoons. It's probably a little bit more than that, but... Okay. So with rice, you can do a few different things. You can let this saute and cook a little bit. You can also toast the rice, which is what I'm gonna do right now with the onions because it's gonna make the rice a little bit more flavorful because it's gonna take on some of that oniony deliciousness. I know some of you are like, oh my God, Marissa, how much freaking onions and garlic do you use? And you don't wanna let this saute for too, too long. So I'd say about 10, maybe 15 seconds and then toss your water in there. This was about, two cups of rice. Actually, no, this is about a cup and a half that I put in here just that was soaking from overnight. So the ratio, so the ratio of water to rice, so one cup of water you put two, so, sorry, one cup of rice you put two cups of water. So I got two cups here. I'd say about another half a cup. There you go. 
I am using my Santivia water filter, if you guys can see that, because I never drink tap water. It is filled with so many nasty things, and I find that the filtered water tastes so much more refreshing. So I'm going to... Okay. So we're gonna put that at a four and let that chill. I'm going to shut this off for now. <laughs> okay guys, literally that is all I have to show you. Such a delicious chili. I can't wait to dive in and literally indulge in it because oh, I'm so hungry. I feel like every time I finish my videos, I'm starving to the point where like I might finish the entire pot that I just created. And I also want to throw out there that you guys can double this recipe, which what I usually like to do because I end up freezing half of my batch that I make into smaller mason jars so I can have it for other days. Um, if I'm hungry or I'm too lazy to cook, I just take Frankie. it out of the fridge and... Frankie's back. Frankie's back? Yeah. Oh, okay guys, He's hold on, Frankie's guy. back. Just give me a second. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. Okay, sorry guys, I had to go see that some bad guy on a show that Liam's watching is back on there. And those are easy, quick meal preps. Literally the easiest thing you freeze, if I make soup, if I make stews, if I make chilies, anything that I can freeze, and put in the freezer for other days. I always do it because it saves me a shit ton of time. And time is very precious to me because I feel like as a mother, time just flies and you're just like, oh my God, it's December already and I swear we're just in January. So that's pretty much it guys. Give this video a like, 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 and don't forget to subscribe down at the bottom and Ding that bell so you know when I'm putting up some awesome videos for you. See you guys.